Kel, good to have you back. What are some of the words with a Christmas connection that we're unlikely to hear this year? Unlikely. Well, uh, that word tidings, the one you mentioned, it's now become a very dated word. It, it's actually it comes from an old Germanic source and it meant something like time or a series of events over time. So it's connected to the tides because they happen on a kind of time. Ah, oh, glad tidings. Time table with the, right. the ocean, okay. ocean comes in and goes out. Okay. So tidings are about okay. an event or a series of events. Or what about Weissel? Weissel? Yeah, wassel, wassel. Wassel. Uh, I'm giving you the old English, yes, the old English pronunciation. Uh, wasseling was, when people went door to door singing carols, it was called wasseling. Uh, and here we go, wasseling. And some of the old carols ha contains that word, wasseling. Uh, and wasseling is an old uh, Scandinavian word that meant uh, a good cheer, a farewell, uh, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and the idea was you, you, what you expected to get if you sang carols door to door was a cup of something really nice, you know, uh, something a bit alcoholic and a bit pleasant to drink. It would warm you up in the Christmas snow in England. And that was that was the Wassel Cup. So uh, wassailing was quite a pleasant occupation in those days. Well, I have never even heard of it. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> okay. what, about, what about Doniferous? Oh, you won't hear this. This is an exceptionally rare word, but it is a word which you can actually bring into your conversation at Christmas over the, the, the table. Doniferous means bearing gifts. It is so rare, it was recorded oh. in the 18th century, it turns up in a handful of old dictionaries and almost nowhere else. So I tell you what, if you do this at the, the Christmas table, you will be the only one who knows about it and you will look like the smartest person at the table. Doniferous. <laughs> so, Give so it in, a go. So in context, I say, I'm feeling very doniferous. Here's your present. <laughs> That's right. Something along those lines. <laughs> or you've been very deliverous towards the kids this year. Look, the bike and the, 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 the remote control for the game or whatever, yes. Good, good. Don't give it away, Kel. Don't give it away. Now, <laughs> cr crapulence. Please tell me this oh. is above board. Yeah. It, it's a real word. First recorded 17... 27, uh, and we don't use it much these days, but on Boxing Day, not you, people like you and me, because we're sensible people, but crapulence means sickness uh, from over-eating, over-indulging, uh, drinking too much. So it's a Boxing Day word. Would you agree it's a Boxing Day word? Yes, it is, and too often during the year as well, but that's another story. Uh, right about, yes. What about from the, from the song Deck the Halls? Is it decorations? No. Actually, the words are related. Uh, decking meant to decorate, and it's an old Germanic word. Now, we wouldn't use that anymore these days, but, you know, deck the halls with boughs of holly and all that kind of thing still turns up in the carols that you hear playing over the PA system when you go to the supermarket. Yeah. So it's, it's still around as a carol, and we don't stop to think what does it actually mean, but it does mean decorate. It, it means to cover. It was a Germanic word that meant to cover with something, was to deck it. So that's where it, that's the source. And the sad thing about Christmas, and this happens more and more every year, is that we're, get, we're sending and we're receiving less and less Christmas cards. So true. Absolutely. They used to fill the mantelpiece. And we, we've got a few these the, this year, but very few. And some people send e-cards. I've got to tell you, Chris, I think e-cards are a bit of a cheat. Christmas cards were invented uh, in 1844 by a man named Sir Henry Cole. He'd opened a shop in Bond Street in London, and what he wanted to do was to encourage people to appreciate fine art. So he was selling really decorative pieces and nice objet d'art, and he thought, now, if I put out cards at Christmas time for people to buy and sell. They're not expensive. Lots of people will get them and we'll put nice pieces of, you know, nativity art on the front cover and we will spread art amongst the people. It was a kind of art appreciation exercise. So, so Henry Cole came up with the idea. It flourished for a long time, not always with good art. There have been some pretty bad Christmas cards over the years, but now... For whatever reason, I don't know whether it's because we're not using the post anymore or what it is, but it's uh, whether our connections with each other are not as strong as they used to be. But it does seem to be a dying art, doesn't it, Chris? Yes, it does. Although I spoke to someone on radio the other day that said she just sent 150 cards out, as she does every single year, and she is to be praised for her efforts. Now, one last thing. How dare Australians adopt that terrible Christmas Americanism? Happy holidays! Happy Holidays was coined in Philadelphia in the late 1800s. In, in the, it's, it's in a Philadelphia newspaper. But it hung around in the background for a long time until after the Second World War when somehow or other 
bunch of Americans, and America's a very, you know, on the surface, a very Christian country, a bunch of Americans decided they wanted to take Christ out of Christmas. They didn't want to embarrass themselves or embarrass anyone else, although uh, what's embarrassing about the infant Jesus, I have no idea. Uh, consequently, they picked up this expression, which had been coined 100 years earlier, and they said, no, we won't say Merry Christmas, we'll say Happy Holidays. Well, I'm sorry, it's a really lame idea, and whoever came up with that should... You know, we, they should be put out of our misery, quite frankly. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's not it. a good idea. No, absolutely. Kel Richards, have a very merry and holy Christmas. Indeed, you do exactly the same, you and your family, mate. Thank you, Kel. Good on you.